stand. We've got the touch. I'm small in stature only, but I'm heavy in belief. I'm leading by example, so you can count on me as I flash this million dollar smile. The world will know it's all worthwhile because I'm banking on the magic. Banking on success. Banking on some people who simply want the best. I'm proud to be before you. I'm proud to be top rank. I'm elite executive national sales director. My name is Gloria Mayfield. You guys, we just got the word. We blew out the 100,000 tweets on Instagram. Oh my God. The company is so excited for what we have done around the nation when we pull together as a company. We can do some amazing things. Can you believe it? OMG, Instagram was like, whoop. I mean, like, whoop. That's exciting. You guys, seriously, I tell people after 28 years of doing Mary Kay, what I've loved the most about doing my Mary Kay business is who I've become in the process. But who I've loved the second most is the friends I've made along the way. I truly wish for you the kind of girlfriends that we have. And to be here with my sister, Ennis You guys, I have three other sisters. And then I have my sister in the Steve, so I'm always very grateful for my NSDs. I'm so amazed by brand new Brittany. I'm so amazed by brand new Krista. I'm so amazed by my own Sabrina Goodwin Monday. And to be here with Michelle and Gina as well, you guys, seriously, this is a big deal. And the only reason to have you here has been just the piece of pie. I know I'm not supposed to. But you are just the best. You guys, give the Nationals a big round of applause. You guys, we are we're in a fierce race. We're in a fierce race in Mary Kay. And I love the race because iron sharpens iron. And we are so ready for this amazing race. I could not do this race without the amazing magic and what they've done and the, and the leaders. You guys, Tony Blackman, stand up because she doesn't often get the recognition, but she's leading my personal unit. Who is going to be my first, my first my unit will be completing their sixth two million dollar year. They are already on target for two point one million dollars this year. Congratulations to them. To my other leaders in the room, Sherry O'Bannon, please stand up. Barbara Stewart, please stand up. Lisa Charity, please stand up. Michelle Calvert, please stand up. And number two at this conference. And our director, Miss Go Give 2016, even Osaze, please stand up. I am so extremely proud of them. I'm so excited to the entire Magic family here. It is a big, 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 if you don't race, you sleep. They just said that in that video. They said, if you don't go, you'll never know. If you don't go to the skincare class, you'll never know. If you don't go, you'll never know. You guys, I saw this poem and I want to read it to you really quickly. Although reading can be very challenging for me. <laughs> but I saw it because I know that we all woke up this morning somewhere on my iPad. <laughs> We all woke up. And I want to read this to you. 
It said, when I woke up this morning, I asked myself, what is life about? I found the answer in my room. The fan said, be cool. The ceiling said, aim high. The window said, see the world. The clock said, every minute is precious. The mirror said, reflect before you act. The calendar said, be up to date. The door said, push hard for your goals. And the floor said, kneel down and pray. It's all in front of you every single day. You guys, my story is one. I'm born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. I am a solid Midwestern sister. I absolutely love the fact that my parents were 62 years of marriage before my dad passed. I grew up in an amazing home, an amazing home of a mother and father who wanted to pour into us tremendous high self-esteem. I'm the third of four girls. My other sisters are amazing, each one of them entrepreneurs in their own right. It's so fun. My family is so fun, like your family is so fun. My family is my heartbeat for sure. When I was in the seventh grade, they did find out I was dyslexic. Actually, what happened is I went to um, my social studies class, and there was a book report, and I cut up the book from the my, my, my elementary book. And they said, why did you cut that book? Because that's the only book that I knew. I didn't know it. They had no testing. My parents were educators. They had missed it. No one knew I was dyslexic until I was in the seventh grade. And I was that student that when you got to take classes and you finished your work and you got to play out the playground, I was the one who had to stay behind. I'm the one that you waved at, like, see you on the playground. I was the one that stood in there and had to have the extra time. But I pushed hard and finished high school. I went on to college at Howard University and I studied management and then I left from there. And I moved to Boston to work for Polaroid Corporation. And I was a manufacturing supervisor. And I left from there and I went to Harvard Business School. And I studied there and at Harvard Business School, my very first test, it was a four hour written exam. A four hour written exam and all I could turn on, turn in was one line on that exam because I couldn't handle it. And that's when I learned how to humble myself the most when I had to go into a very competitive situation and tell them I had an inability to read. I could get through the application process, but it was very, very challenging. And when you have to humble yourself like that, it really does change the way you could see yourself. But I pushed through. I want you guys to know, it was at that time that I was married and I started Harvard Business School with a black guy. I did, it was just an amazing time in my life. And I tell people that when you look at me, you see a very smart, successful entrepreneur when you see me here. But then at that time in my life, I was that and nobody knew, no one knew. My mother didn't know, my sisters didn't know. No one knew my story. How many of you know that no one knows your story? No one knows your story until you can stand on the stage and tell the story. But I kept going, and I left there, and I took a job with IBM. I became a superstar in sales for IBM, because here's the deal. People who are dyslexic have a lot of skills. I turned my non-reading my non ability into my talking ability. <laughs> and I turned it into something who could sell large computers, and I sold computers for them, and then I, they offered me a promotion. And I don't know how many of you work at those high-powered executive jobs, but I was working at a job where they were going to promote me, and I was going to take, have a decrease in pay because they were going to take me off commission and put me on straight salary. And I don't know how many of you can relate to that, but straight salary with a decrease. How many of you seriously could get excited about working harder and longer for a decrease? <laughs> exactly. And so I quit. And it was very, very hard for me, but I quit anyway, you guys. I'm just telling you, it was amazing because my girlfriend called me. I switched jobs and started working for Harvard Business School, but my girlfriend called me on that Monday and she invited me to her house. She lived two doors down, her name is Jackie. She called me on Tuesday and invited me to her house. And then she called me on Wednesday and invited me in the house. If you're thinking about taking a note, the note you I want you to write down is follow up. It's for real. The fortune's in the follow up. And she called me and she called me and she called me. And she said, I said, Jackie, why do you keep calling me? I told you I'm coming to your house. She said, girl, I just got off the phone with the woman. You guys are the woman. I just got off the phone with the woman. I said, oh, she said, the woman that's coming over to my house. I said, really? She said, yes. Yeah. She said, if I have five guests, she's going to bring me a gift. 
<laughs> I said, okay, then I'm coming. And I decided to come over to her house, which I was coming anyway, with both my kids, because Jackie said she was cooking. <laughs> so I came over to her house, and you guys, seriously, in two hours, after that woman squirted and spread and asked me if we wanted some of it, she sold $350. And immediately, immediately, I leaned over to my kids, I said, we're gonna sell Mary Kay. <laughs> Immediately, I didn't know about all of this. I had no clue. All I know is that woman sold three hundred and fifty dollars in two hours, and I wanted to do Mary Kay. You guys, because of that time, I wanted to make some extra money. That's all I thought about, and I did not have any time for extra money. Everybody told me I didn't have any time. Has anybody ever told you you don't have time? You don't have time. We don't have time to do what we do now let alone to build something else, but I wanted something else. And so I started my Mary Kay business. I came to the business, I went to this game, to the very first meet, and I saw them excited and making money. And you guys, I was so uncomfortable at that first meeting. Everybody was smiling, everybody was happy, everybody was clapping, I was like, oh no. <laughs> Absolutely not. And then this woman stood up and she said, I sold $700. I looked at her and said, how you doing? <laughs> I just started hugging her right then, you guys, seriously. I wanted to make $200 extra a week. That's what my goal was, $200 extra a week to keep my kids in daycare. 27 years later, 28 years later, all I do is teach women how to come home and be with their kids. Not me. Nope. <laughs> You're going to daycare. <laughs> You're going to day somewhere, okay? <laughs> You're getting out of here, for sure. That was me. I'm not judging you, but that was me. I'm telling you, it has been such an incredible ride because I wanted, I went on Target for my car, I fell off Target for my car. I went back on Target for my car. You guys, the stories, the stories, the stories are so, so, so amazing. I became a single parent. And I was a single parent for seven years. Do we have any single parents in the room? I was a single parent for seven years, and I was a very happy single parent. And then I went down to Florida, to Wet n' Wild, where I met my husband. It was wet. And it was wild. And I met him, and it was awesome. And then all of a sudden, he walked up to me and he said, you know, is your husband with you? I said, no, is your wife with you? He said, no. He said, my name is Ken. I said, oh, my name is Gloria. And then, bam, over the loudspeaker, this big announcement, Gloria Mayfield, come to the security office. Gloria Mayfield, come to the security office. I said, excuse me. Excuse me. So I went up to the security office and there was my daughter in the security office, crying. Where were you? Where were you? I don't know why she's so dramatic. I don't know where she is. But she was crying, crying, crying. I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she said, I want to go to the bathroom. I said, okay, let's go to the bathroom. I said, and I took her to the bathroom. I said, where's your brother? She said, I, she said he's in the kiddie pool. So we walked over there, and there he was, just like he is today. I walked over to him, he said, I told her to pee in the water. <laughs> I told her to pee in the water. <laughs> you guys, he is just that way today. <laughs> Ken and I did get married, and this September we will celebrate 20 years of marriage. He was a brand new entrepreneur in his business. I was a brand new sales director in my business. He is now an extremely successful entrepreneur in the construction business. And just a couple of months ago, he was just placed on the United States Federal Reserve Board for the United States. It's just very amazing. You guys, we married with four kids. I had two, he had two. We blended four teenagers at the same time. How many of you have a teenager at home right now? Put your hand up high, put your hand up high, put your hand up very, very high, put your hand up high so I can pray for you. <laughs> we have the most amazing, the most amazing children. Keenan is our oldest. After he turned down his offer from Facebook in order to take a job with Google. I know. Super, super, super smart. When we talk, 
I just go like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is so cool, whatever you just said. <laughs> that is cool. He's an entrepreneur now. Rick Kenya is clearly a dog whisperer. She has a dog training business. I have a dog at home. If my dog acts up, I'll tell to my dog, I'm gonna call her Kenya, because he is scared of her long distance. <laughs> She's an amazing mom of three amazing girls who call me Gigi. They call me grandma, they get no money. <laughs> Can you imagine me in the mall? And they say, grandma, I told her I would look at him like this and go, mm. <laughs> Grandma, <laughs> Kalea is amazing, and I love them. I love my granddaughters. They're so amazing. Kalea is the one who leaned over and she said, Gigi, can I sing to you? I said, yes, you can sing to me. Brilliant. She's a brilliant, brilliant girl. Anisha is a master gymnast, and Ayana is the most determined little girl I've ever met. We went to Disney World. <laughs> she saw the snow white dress. She says, Gigi, I want that. I said, no. Do you know what she did? She took off her all her clothes. Everything. <laughs> everything. Shoes, panties, everything. And went like this. teaching all over the world. And my youngest is Chauncey. He's in Detroit. He was the 15, 16 year old that we had to ship off to the all boys Christian military academy because he went nuts at 16 years old. <laughs> I sent him a long way away. He was very, 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 very mad. And I was so thankful and grateful for my American opportunity because the cost to go to that school would have had to drop $25,000 of an unexpected expense for him to go there. And I want you guys to know that one ability turned him around. He sat down with a teacher that was at that school that really taught him how to write. You guys, this January at 29 years old, he bought his first house. He already had a baby. I mean, he bought his first house, was already married to Erica, had a baby, and was named partner in a law firm this January. <laughs> Carefully, when we talk about these wise stories, I want to tell you that my whys have changed over the 28 years I've been in Mary Kay. I'm going to go over the list of what those whys are as they change because, really, honestly, I experienced a big part of that when I had a chance to go to Detroit and spend the weekend with my son Erica and his son Trey, Chauncey Mayfield III. And I had a chance to shut my doors and shut my life and shut down everything and be a true example when Mary Kay said, God first family second, career third. It was truly the example that I needed over and over in my life. First, I started my why because I wanted a little extra money. Second, my next why was because I wanted the challenges and the gift. I joined Mary Kay for the money. I fell in love with the opportunity because of the recognition. And I grew because of the competition. My next why was to win a car because I wanted to prove to the world that I could do it. I had so many people telling me I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, you'll never do it, you'll never do it. And I'm not talking about my immediate family, I'm talking about my friends, my co-workers, everybody I used to talk to said, kept saying, you're not gonna do it, boy, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. People said all the time, I had to win my car to prove it to the world. Then I was DIQ, and I was a DIQ three times, you guys, three times. I kept falling off the DIQ chart until one day I woke up and listened to a story, a song, and I changed my mind, and then we crushed it. We crushed it. We went from 22 people to 67 people in one month and broke the DIQ record. You guys, you can go from nothing 
do a lot in a very short period of time. And I became a gold medal specialist like Sabrina talked about. And then the next one is I won my pink Cadillac because I wanted to show the world. First I needed to prove it, then I wanted to show it. And that was the Cadillac. And then I became someone who wanted to, to teach others. And so I became an executive senior sales director in 14 months. And I did that by leading by example. The education for my children was the why. As a single parent, I needed to give them private education because of where we were in our life. That was what was required for me. And then my next why was I wanted to see the world, prove to the world, show the world, see the world. Because I wanted to be around these powerful women. I wanted people that were going to point to my life. And so my why changed. And I remember seeing the variety of women that I would hang with, being at the top of the company. I remember them announcing, we are going to sponsor the Country Music Awards. I said, country? <laughs> Did he say hip hop? Country Music Awards. And all of a sudden, my powerful girlfriends, Linda Tupin and Cindy Williams, were like, what? <laughs> in the world is country. And then I found Taylor Swift and she said, I'll catch you if you take my man. I was like, okay, country. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then I wanted to see the world again because I wanted to take my brand new husband to see the world, my style, the Mary Kay style. When we were going together, we saw it differently. But then when I had a chance to see it with Mary Kay, that became my why. And then my last why is I want friends around the world. I'm so grateful that I've had an opportunity not just to build here in the United States, but to build in Brazil, and to build in Colombia, and to build into Canada, and to build into Mexico. You guys, because I wanted friends around the world. I want to stop here for a second. I want you to look at who's sitting next to you. Look who's sitting next to you. And then look, look who's sitting next to you. And I want you to know that just one person, one person that you can recruit can change your world. And I'm going to ask Sabrina Goodwin Monday to come up here really quickly on this stage. Sabrina, I'm calling you on the stage. I know you're not listening to my story because you've heard it before. So come on up here. <laughs> come on up here. Oh, I got to put my Come on up here, because I want all of you guys to know, you never know how some one person can change your life. One person. I'm just here to tell you, because when you leave here, you just do not know. She and I have not done a career conference for a long time together, and I remember the first time I was at a career conference, and I told this, the, the audience that I had gone, I had suffered with domestic violence, and she was in that audience, and I had to be, it took me eight years being a Mary Kay before I could mouth it. But because I was a DIQ, in that one month that we broke the record, I recruited Sabrina in that month. And in that month that she joined Mary Kay, she got a gold medal. And in that month that she joined Mary Kay, she went on target for her car, in that month. I wanna tell you guys, you might leave this arena and you might touch one person who can change your life, your children's life, and your children's children's life. So publicly, even though she talked about my brown Cadillac, <laughs> I want to tell you that I thank you for being the one person who stood in confidence, even when sometimes I was shaky. I want to thank you for joining me when we were going to break the record. I want to thank you for holding me to truth. She used to tell me when things were bad. Boy, that's horrible. It can make you change. I want to thank you for being the strength when I needed the strength, your strength, when you stood there in warm chatter at the stocking store on Saturday in order to finish your job. I want to thank you for creating a brand of yourself that everybody loves you so much. They love you so much. And I get to glean from that. Because they love you so much, they think I'm nice too. <laughs> I want to thank you publicly for telling me I was ready to take the helm. Because I didn't want to. We were so comfortable under my senior national. And we were doing it, and she came to me, she said, Gloria, it's time. It's time for you to do it. I said, really, Sabrina? She said, yes, it's time. So I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for teaching me that you don't have to live next to me in order for you to be strong. 
Sabrina and I ran the Boston area. We were just going there. And then she came to me one day. She says, boy, I'm moving. I said, you're moving? She says, I'm moving to Oklahoma. I said, Oklahoma? She said, yes. I met a man. I met Kenny. I said, you met Kenny? And you're leaving? And we were running. We were doing things so great together. I said, you're leaving? She said, yes. I had met Kenny. I didn't know Kenny. Nothing. So I met Kenny. I said, oh, I see. OK. <laughs> She loved me when I was a single parent. She loved me when I fell in love. She loved me when I was married. She was in the audience at that marriage. She's been there for the celebrations, for the marriage of my children, for the birth of my grandchildren. For when I turned 50 years old, she was at the party. She's been at it for all of it. We've traveled the world as top directors together, you guys. It was amazing. She was with me when we hit Brazil and didn't know the language. Just she and I and Tavia walking through the mall. We did not know any Portuguese. The only thing we said was, Facebook, 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 Facebook. Facebook. And because of Sabrina's tenacity, I went to Brazil, tenacity to Colombia, to be there last month and watch her debut. Her very first director in Colombia has been amazing. And she, she sent my 92-year-old mother her favorite Christmas card. And my mother looked at her family's Christmas card all day long. She said, oh, Sabrina, I thank you for being that one person as an example that all of us can find that one person. That one person. You guys, I need you to stand up really quick. All of you in the audience, I need you to stand up really quick. Just I want you to stand up. And I want you to know that your why will change over time. And it will change into something that you may not recognize all the time. But this is my favorite poem. And it's called Your Deepest Fear. Because so many times in Mary Kay, we hear about the fear of people and what stops us. So I want you to repeat after me. Our deepest fear. Our deepest fear. I don't hear you. Our deepest fear. Our deepest fear. It's not that we're inadequate. It's not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear. Our deepest fear. Is that we're powerful beyond measure. Is that we're powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness. It's our light, not our darkness. That frightens us. That frightens us. We ask ourselves. We ask ourselves. Who am I to be brilliant? Who am I to be brilliant? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Talented. Talented. And fabulous. And fabulous. Now with energy, I want you to ask yourself, actually, who are we not to be? Actually, who are we not to be? You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Your plain small doesn't serve the world. Your plain small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightening. There's nothing enlightening. About shrinking. About shrinking. So that other people. So that other people. Won't feel insecure around you. Won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest. We were born to make manifest. The glory of God. The glory of God. That's within us. That's within us. And it's not in just some of us. And it's not in just some of us. It's in everyone. It's in everyone. And as we let. And as we let. Our own light shine. Our own light shine. We unconsciously. We unconsciously. Give other people permission. Give other people permission. To do the same. To do the same. Very loudly. And as we. And as we. Liberate. Liberate from our own fear. From our own fear. Our presence. Our presence. Automatically. Automatically. Liberates. Liberates. Others. Others. You guys. 